probably going to get clipped, but it's recording. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, and now to broadcast to the Discord in the studio. I will start this off by giving us a visual of what we are doing. How do we spell Nexus? I don't even know. N-E-X-U-S. The next us without the T. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now broadcasting to an empty Discord room, as well as recording. I'm Grim Grizz, Griswold Grim, if you like the long version, here with Sally Joe Michelson Cooper. What is the Fringe Nexus? Is that how you said to spell it? I completely forgot before. That is how I spell it. Excellent. That's good enough. Um... What is the Fringe Nexus? And what is the Fringe Nexus Cafe, which is my my primary interest. Um, this is like, for me, a construction zone of the Fringe Nexus Cafe, because like, what we're going to do here today is so, exactly the sort of thing I want to happen in this virtual space. We're trying to uh, manifest in some sort of way but like you had referenced the uh, the fringe nexus itself and you visualized it as some sort of obelisk but what was yours also in the desert well at first it was in a very very vast space so i was kind of thinking something like a desert like a like a tombstone desert overlaid with like a matrix or tron space like a like a grid sky like well because i have a propensity to think in multiple visuals at once so like yes but also just that really dry no naturally occurring resources actually i what i immediately thought of was the old Star Wars cantina. Mos Eisley? The Mos Eisley cantina? I, I don't know. The, it's from the, the original Star Wars, not the new whatever they are. Simon. Um, yeah. Stop sharing for a second. I want to... Stop sharing video? Yeah. I just want to... Figure out something? Let me... We'll turn it back on in a second, but... I wanna Stop sharing. Stop sharing. Okay. Feel free. Um, ooh, speaker view. No, I'm speaking. No, it doesn't work when I do that. Damn it. Here, I'm hiding you. Oh, this is you. the drawing you sent me of the fringe nexus yeah, turn bar and grill. Real quick, it's the only way I can make it big. Oh, okay. Stop video. There we go. Oh, and then I turned it invisible. God, bless it. Um, like it's this. Do you see? No, that, that didn't even make you big. Hold on. There we go. Uh, there it's big. I made it big, and now I have to... But you have the green screen over it. Yeah, I'm cutting the... This is all going to be clipped out. It's going to be so great. <laughs> okay. So this is like... I had the vision of it in my head, and uh, I came in... Like, it came to me. Like, I saw it. It wasn't like, you know, I think of something, and then I craft it with my mind. Like, the vision of this thing came to me. Yeah. And um, it was... Like I said, like this is the the shape of the logo I got pretty right, I'm sure. The bar and grill part of the building is completely, you know, not. And the, the fact that it's in the desert and there's a moon over here, that was all part of it. There was like a, maybe some arroyos on the ex outsides, but that's all I could capture. That's all I could capture at the time. That's all I could capture at the time. So... While you were doing that, I went back in time and drew my original impression. All right, you can turn your things on now. All right. How to do this. Huzzah. Yay. Bam. So, my original ishness, which is what Tolkien called the ideas that pop into your mind, your ishnesses, 
How um, do you spell that? Uh, yeah. I don't know. There's a book of ishness, which I've been like sucked down a YouTube rabbit hole into. Um, so but it's probably just like I S H N E S S, right? It's like instances and ishes together. Ishnesses. Anyway, um, <laughs> okay, yeah. my my original inchness of this in my head, except it wasn't gray, it was like the tan dirt color. And there's an obelisk in the middle of nowhere. And then there's like desert hills way in the background. But through all of this space, which is like, I'm trying, I'm going to try and do this better. Is this circle thing? We got a little bit of like, hops vibration relativity thing going on and this obelisk is a signpost and that's where like people are just finding this path out on the fringes where the fields vent yeah that's the thing you can see from far away in the middle of nowhere ah. yes and see like what i got was like a desert highway cafe so yeah. it's like half a mile down the road is where you stop for a burger when you're going to the for, to actually be there. You sound like yours is more in the Q continuum. Ew. Man, I, here's, here's a pro tip for anybody that bothers to watch this video. The whole QAnon thing, Q is John Delancey. Like, it's unsolvable because they're like, no, that's the Q from Star Trek, you idiot. But that's why he's the perfect Q. I don't know. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. That makes ridiculous, excellent sense. I know. I mean, I solved why the SJWs were so upset by Pepe this morning watching one of Andrew's videos. So. Really? What is it? Oh, because they are turned into frogs. Oh, because, right, because right. Because of what that guy the, was saying. Yeah, and, and you think about Gad Sad's, like, the sneaky fart strategy thing. The sneaky that is fart basically strategy? Being, what? Yeah, the Gad Sad has this whole evolutionary biology thing of, like, different species that also have the effeminate men who, like, sneak around, and that's their strategy, like, for getting with chicks. And they're encouraging the sneaky fart strategy by... It making men who are masculine like bad and then when you embrace the image of the frog you break the spell and that's really offensive because you're really breaking their reality so it makes them like go belligerent like that's the rage because you you break that um glamour spell it, when you're when you embrace that yes i am the frog that's what kissing the frog is is like yes you are the frog and then that breaks the spell. Yeah, so it's like um, when when every when all the boys have been turned into frogs, if they embrace it, then yeah, then they can't deny that all the boys have been turned into frogs. Yes, but so it that's going the... to enrage you if you're trying to keep them frogs. Right, right. Like irrationally. <laughs> See, I come at it from the uh, the uh, the rat one. Down the rabbit hole, mouse utopia experiment. Experiment. Oh, like that's so gross, but obvious. Their society degenerated to the point where, like, the boys didn't compete for breeding, and like, the, they, no, they no, just, that's not the thing though, because it, they would just quietly go and not be gross. But that's not what's happened. Mm, there's no quietness. That's so, happened. You know, I mean, no, I there's just, no quietness. There is. We don't hear you. Don't hear the quietness. It's quiet. Well, maybe. There's people. There's there's plenty of people that like the hikikimori. Like, well, maybe they come out. They come out to NPC to get the money, and then they go back home and dive into a digital world. What like mm -hmm. and then the, the I guess the gay ones groom a lot. So. No, I I just I don't think that's the same as the mouse utopia thing, um, but I I don't have enough solid reasons why and you guys are by far more that's that's your like focus group is he which i think is a really good that somebody's focusing on it so there's an army there <laughs> we'll just all have right to convince him that this game is worth playing so 
I'm going to just make some lines to give us fastness. And I might destroy everything I draw multiple times because that's that's sometimes how it goes. So don't panic if that happens. Or panic. I mean, whatever you need to do, but I'm just throwing it in there. No, I always like to watch Masters work. It's fascinating <laughs> to see. Well, you'll be sad. No, you just, you know, it's in there. Whether or not you manage to unleash it <laughs> in this instance. In this instance of reality. So you, you travel around to a lot more different tribes than I do. Is that like actually yeah. watching their stuff or listening to their stuff or mainly through the um, Discord interactions these days? I might just have a sick curiosity. <laughs> I think maybe my place is between the frames and I think my place is communication before language maybe somehow. Um, and so I observe lots of all of this like it's not just on discord for me i also like there's like the old ladies that are in the click at church and the old ladies that are outside of the click at church there's also like the old guys that sit down at the coffee shop and then the young guys who read the self-help books down at the coffee shop so like this isn't just a discord thing for me it's like somehow that's what i do and you have click vision or tribe vision i mean there's been few i haven't been able to like at least nicely sit by long enough to kind of get an idea um i even when i when i lived in dc i even had some sorority chick roommates for a minute now we only got along because of my willingness to forego some of the details. Um, but I did genuinely come to appreciate and like them. It took a minute for a couple of them. <laughs> but I do. Do you think that's a result of your brat training? Um, no, I think it's uh, being a preacher's kid. Um, and just having to be nice a lot. Like, I, I think that was actually a positive that my folks gave me. My folks are very giving people and very like benefit of the doubt to others, maybe to a fault, maybe to a point where it's unfunctional for them. Um, I don't know that it was always functional for me growing up either, but being amicable more than most people are willing to and having excessive patience Sometimes it's not been good for my life, but there are ways that it is. So, so you think you see yourself as having excessive patience? I can. Okay. I can. Like, sometimes patience can be addictive. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure I had seen it manifest. And... Um, no, because I'm also working on being more assertive, and this is one of the places that I'm learning to do that. Like, I remember last year, at least, uh, like, in the spring when, uh, when Ryan and Mark had started up, you being around, how, when did you fall in with this? Um, I was observing Mark. Uh, before then, I probably started observing them when they did their Vanderclay thing because I was deep into Vanderclay for a while because that was the natural progression after Peterson went off the map. And actually, I got interested in Vanderclay a little bit before Peterson went off the map and then come to find out with all of his struggles that was basically when he got on Benzos and I had found he had gotten boring and that lines up perfectly with when that happened and so that's that's a bummer but i'm hoping he recovers so anyway but yeah so i noticed ryan and mercury the spring before 
my baby man was born. But you didn't come into the channel when it was in its first incarnation. No, I um I just kind of observed Ryan Mark. Actually, I was observing Ryan more at first because I get really interested. I get interested in young people that are heading in directions. Um, I don't know if I'm just attracted to the idea of the potential or what. Maybe it just reminds me of my soldiers. That could be it. Because I, I did have soldiers for a while. And, like, I think the between 19 to 24-year-olds, like, which maybe Ryan was older, but he didn't seem older if he is. I don't know. Anyway, so... Everybody seems terribly young to me now. You know, one... Uh, yeah, when did that happen? After mid-30s, like, everybody's a baby. Because, like, they're the ones doing things. And, like, people that aren't are usually working or raising children so well anyway and then um the i really started paying attention to mercury august of last year i had uh take my i took my baby with me to south dakota for the first time and i was staying at my folks's house and they weren't there so i just had amounts of downtime <laughs> between like broken sleep patterns and it i figured out mercury was coming online at certain times at night and so I started watching it and, and, and Mercury having zero dissidents is such a relief because I, I don't enjoy people that are dissident. It's, I can tolerate it, but I, I don't enjoy it. And dissidents. Dissidents. Yes. Please, uh, describe an extremely dissident person. Without naming anyone. Like, amalgamate them into one disgusting blob of excuse monster, but make it the dissident person. What's it? What's I think there? Karen is an example of a dissident person, but maybe not. Maybe you could have an authentic Karen. I would think most Karens are authentic. No. No, I think there's plenty of Karens that aren't authentic, but that's a different subject. Um, What, what I'm using the dissident's term is when a person presents one face and internally has another. Oh, so that's like, that's dissonance. Dissidence, but some people don't know that they're doing it. Some people are, are, are just, are just dissident by their nature or by happenstance. They're, it's not a malicious dissidence. It just is a dissidence. All right, I gotta look the word up now. This is getting too intense. I don't think that it's used that way in psychology. So I just started what, using it that what, way because I needed a term for being two-faced that wasn't mean. It sounds like dissonance to me. Like the person does not line up with their what they're present presenting. So there's. It's I I think I looked it up at some point. Like I think at some point I looked it up. Protest so. against official policy. No, dissent. that's dissident. I'm saying dissidents. Dissidents. They have dissidents. Yeah, that's the noun. Oh. Well, anyway. So here, this one. Uh, can you, let me see what happens. No, I can't, because you're the host. Um, well, not, do you want me to stop sharing? Yeah, I'll put the word on the screen. Okay. Because I think dissonance fits better. It's like sonic, so. But we've digressed, right? <laughs> I think we digressed. Theory we're talking about. about the fringe nexus. But you were asking how I fell in with paying yeah. attention to Mercury. So this goes. And, and Mercury's lack of, like. He has none. He has none. And that was, like, on YouTube for some reason, right? And you were like, what the hell? Well, I mean, I I looked him up, like, because he was on Vanderclay, and him and Ryan were on Vanderclay. I started watching him and Ryan because I looked them up through Vanderclay after going through a huge amount of Vanderclay stuff, and that would have been spring of 2019. Right. And where are things now? Like, if Vanderclay was, like, the first logical step 
post Peterson, then what happened on your journey? Like um, Vanderclay, then these fellows, and then well, there's Vanderclay, and then there's the Bridges of Meaning Discord, and then there was Verveki that intersected the Bridges of Meaning Discord, and then my friends from Bridges of Meaning, some of them jumped ship and went over to Vanderclay's ship, and so then I visit there, and then. Um, you guys ended up getting on Discord, and so I started paying attention to that, and um, I don't know, trying to work out what I'm doing for myself with my art stuff, I, uh, I tried to sell work in some galleries, and it just didn't work, and I'd already had the YouTube channel, and so I was like, I'll just start doing this stuff, and then... Yeah. Yeah. So, what is the fringe, and what is Discord in relation to it? The fringes, like this realm, is the thought realm. I like to draw mental landscapes as physical landscapes because there's something that you can relate to cross culturally. So, like this piece. This piece is my conquering chaos piece, and it's the modern information age. We 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 need you to stop the drawing share to see it, right? Oh well, I could put it on the. Hey, there you go. <laughs> I have to wait for my cam to catch up with me. Are you seeing it? Um, it looks. Okay, now now it's caught up. It looks fecal from what I see. Can you bring well, it closer to the lens? Well, it's not supposed to be viewed straight down. It's supposed to be viewed sideways. So it's a mountain range, and we've got our little hiker here climbing Yeah, it. that's a nice view. Anyway, but this is the, the modern landscape where we have an understanding of the physical world. We, knew, we know the tools we need to take into it. It's really like, it's not a deal. We can climb the mountains conquering chaos we can take the tools with us into the realm of the unknown and navigate it so this is doing the same thing again i'm drawing a mental landscape as a physical landscape but i'm trying to draw this place we get when we're outside the boundaries of when we're past the edges of our wisdom traditions and we're bumping into other people who are past the edges of their wisdom traditions, or maybe not even just wisdom traditions, when you're past the edges of understood reasonings. Yes. When you're past the edges of understood reasonings, and that's where the people in the intellectual dark web are. They're outside of, they're outside of condoned conversation and association. And that's what's happened on the internet is thought communities, thought bubbles, thought groups. There are some people who keep going further out, further out, further out, further out, and they end up past all condoned association and doctrine. So it's not a bad place or a good place, but it's a place between places. And that's how we get these people from the ivory tower and truckers and Vanderclay and Peterson and Michael Malice and Milo and you and me and other housewives from the Midwest. And <laughs> Welcome to the the nexus of the friends. Yeah, so that is that is the friends nexus. So I want to give it a little bit of barrenness, but I want to give it also intersections on straight lines and curved lines, implying this way of getting there. I um, it's a you 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 mentioned IDW, which is funny because I I'm in a different bubble. To me, yeah. to me, I'm in the ALW, which uh, 
Pajot references the ILW on the Zombie Pentecost 2020 live so, stream. You should go back and watch it. Um, I, I know. He actually he re re rebuked me for using IDW in the thing. Um, and I was just like, no. Because the reason the IDW is necessary is better understood if you were recently in contact with academia. Right. And I did art school from 2015 to 2018. And while I don't consider myself like a huge major part of it, I do have a bachelor's of fine arts and I did live through the trend collection in an art school. And it is necessary to declare yourself opposed and a willingness to be the bad guy. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. from that viewpoint, they're the good guys, whatever, whatever, you know? So declaring yourself dark before someone else does it is a shield. Here? No, well, that's the, I, think, I think that's how Eric is using it. And that's also why I pay attention to Eric and I paid a lot of attention to Brett and his whole getting kicked out of Evergreen because that happened while I was in school. Right. And like my school wasn't that nasty, but I feel like one or two more bad actors and it could have been. All right. So on this fringe, you said you saw an obelisk. Do you still? Um, the obelisk was just a manifestation of a really old signpost that would be high enough for people, like, it would draw people in. Because, like, um, the question I want to ask you now, kind of, um, you know, if it was there and had a staircase, and we walked up to top, to the top of it, and looked around, and, like, this is the plane of existence upon which the fringe exists. What, now I'm seeing what was the Tower Peterson, of like, Babel with a here neon sign on it. Like, if we look at, if we look, though, from here toward academia, what was it before? And, like, was Peterson an explosion there? No, and, no. And what, he, what, what are we watching? If you go back the last three years and watch academia from up here on the fringe nexus, what do you see? The last well, few years in academia. It's not, it's not where it's not academia moving it's people getting blown out of it by what was the explosion or how what's the what's the, doing the blowing mm, yeah it's like a really really slow chemical reaction and mixing freaking postmodernism and reality <laughs> i don't know i had to find out what postmodernism was just to find out what i disliked at school <laughs> see for me like peterson was the was like the first one to sort of jump ship from the ship that is the academy when he decided to take the stand on them not putting words in his mouth and um, yeah when he came out he was like he had three years of maps of meaning which is his life's work up until his speaking career um, right for everybody to find so right. when that happened he had something to stand on when he made his stand that that tethered him like to relevance and then when he was out here though he was talking about we'll just make college public we'll put it on the internet you know you know i lose my tenure whatever there's other ways to do this and then you know he took the book tour and we don't have to talk about well, he was trying to save what he knows. That's It's like Eric and trying to save one of those newspapers. It's like, dude, whatever, not important. But it's hard to tell people what they've always cared about is not important. Like, it's just hard to tell people that. Right. There's, I mean, but see, for me, I got pulled into him when, with the ayahuasca letter. And in that... Oh, Peterson? Yeah. Because I was searching, my searching was like, um, maybe if I blow enough holes in my psyche, I'll see something beyond reality that makes being in reality worthwhile. Because yeah. um, I took the Fight Club pill 
and fell out of fell out of church way back when. And, you know, it's led to yeah. some interesting places where I've seen all sorts of interesting things, but there was a lot of Cheetos involved, as you would think. In your opinion, there was a great deal I don't know. It's, it's interesting, Cheetos. though, because you can come from different places and you can come for totally different reasons and end up at the same place. That's That's why this is an interesting place, like, trying to... I, I was trying to figure this out after my conversation with Paul. Um, and I really need to have another one and I need to not lead it as much because I was still very obsessed about school at the time, which made sense at the time, but it, it doesn't make sense now. Um, and I was trying to figure out where, where doubt crept in. And I think I was undermining habit maybe um, and I wouldn't say that I'm even over that so much as I'm just over worrying about it. There you go. Um, they call that acceptance some, in some circles. Yeah, the, 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 it's not a problem until people start asking me specifics and I'm still really convinced about not lying. And then that makes huge amounts of church untenable. But anyway, I digress. Um, somewhere between finding out how much people suck in my previous marriage and one of my friends dying, I did not have that experience of finding God in suffering that Christians talk about all the time. I don't find God there. I find God in like not suffering. <laughs> so it, it, it's just been difficult. But the it didn't matter as much to me in a way because even at my worst, I could see that Christians were my people and that a Christian life lived is typically a better life, at least, or at least a, a life with reverence for something is a better life lived. I don't necessarily know if I'm 100% dead set that it has to be Christianity. It's silly for me that it wouldn't be Christianity because Christianity is my wisdom tradition of heritage. And I don't know anymore if people get to choose. Like, well, you never get to choose your heritage. No. Well, but I mean your wisdom tradition or like your religion. I, I don't know if you truly get to choose. I think it is more like your heritage. Like, I don't even think I'm going to escape being a Protestant because I was trying for a minute and I was thinking about being Orthodox, and then I I couldn't. So anyway, yeah. But that's its own thing. That that all came from you. Uh, need to get back on with Vanderclay. You remember where you were before that? We were talking about the Fringe Nexus and how I started walking to Merck. I don't know. This has been a full circle rabbit hole. I'm lost now. I had something when we were there, but I let you take it to the Vanderclay place. Um, oh, sorry. No, no, it's all good. What about what about a big neon sign arrow that says here? I don't see what you see. I, I haven't looked at the Nexus itself. I stopped at the cafe and said that's where I that's where I am. So. Oh. I can't I can't steer that. Much. Um. I was, well, what I saw though is like, is the cafe right a now, diner your, your or is are, it a cantina? I can bring up a clip of Mal Sizely. Um, I'll just, I'll just make something up. The, uh, what, what I saw earlier when you were working on this though, is like where the spheres ven isn't covered. Your, your spheres aren't venting. And if they were, then like the various vens could have like manifestations of that ven. Um, oh, I wasn't meaning for them to ven. I meant for the, they're kind of like um, information intersections or they're the, the nexus of the hops, um, hops vibration where it continually rotates and one point is really like all reality kind of a thing. I think I'm going to need to see an animation, an animation of that. What vibration? That's that's on the clip of Eric and Rogan Hobbs vibration. Hobbs. 
How bizarre. Vibration. It's not vibration. It's fibration. Cybration? Fi. F I bration. And it's like it's like a figure eight of donuts going through each other, spinning, and it's like the relationship of what is sea level. Because sea level isn't a singular thing, but we measure it. But really, that doesn't even make sense because it, it's it's a liquid. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, I'll find the clip and plug it in. But I'm I'm merging hop. our our impressions of this, and I'm going to put your. You want to be to the right or to the left? Put you to the left. Makes sense. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm more to the right. The channel to oh, the okay. left, though. Okay, the channel is to the, the right. left. I'll take that for that. I'm going to I'm going to put your Katina bar and grill here. There we go. Here's one by Richard Hannigan, if you let me share. Oh, I have to stop. Do I need to kill my video too? Say again? Do I need to kill my other video? Or no. just the uh... No. I don't think yeah, so. that's a hops see, vibration. Let me look what came out in Discord, but yeah, and then it keeps rotating forever and ever. Yeah, I want to slow it down so I have more time. See, I'm I'm crossing you over with portal imagery right now. Although I think they would be like super annoyed with the Uber existential conversation, which was like the whole reason I was there. So when they started talking about we want to cut out cut out these existential conversations, I was kind of like, well. I guess I gotta find other places to be. Alright, so this is a hop vibration. Hops vibration. It's the coolest math thing I've ever sort of almost really don't understand much. It is pretty damn cool. I don't know if it's coming. It's the relationship of everything to everything. Well. Can you play it? It is playing. You want the sound? Oh, I can't see it. I, That's okay. Weird, We've I'm had sharing. Glitchiness. I've seen it plenty of times. Oh, my my share is paused for some reason. There, there we, go. we go. Sorry about See, that. See, and in there, in all those circles flowing in and out of that, there's a point at which they're intersecting. And that's what I'm saying, like, these realms of thought, when people are getting past these authorized little parameter areas we can't help but intersect because of the nature of intersection always making it back to these points with the relationship of everything to everything else it's like the hops vibration of thought all right now go back to what you're drawing and um see on the inside of the big spirally thing, that's, this is, it, it is kind of a Venn, but it's also not. But I mean, I'm not directly drawing the Hobbes vibration. That's just like one of the instances that made me, like I thought of when I thought of doing this. Well, like I, my visual was like, I'm walking toward this thing and mm -hmm. like these giant thought realm, over, they're doing this Hobbes vibration thing at this point. And like right. where? What did you want? The, uh... Did you want cafe or did you want bar and grill? Man, you know, bar and grill sound is like. I like cafe because it fits better as a YouTube title. Let's do cafe then. It's it's algorithm friendly. It's like, um, but when it's like when you're walking toward it when the when the the fancy thing is flapping around the uh like a park bench and a tree and a bush will pop into existence to your right as you walk toward it and then like there's stupid smart thinkers talking on it or something uh how it's the johnny depp meme from when he was peter pan's author like that'll show up and then fade out pop out of existence and Something will pop into existence on your left as you walk toward this place. That's the visual I got just from thinking about what we're thinking about 
and what you had drawn so far. I'm thinking about that really famous nighttime cafe painting with all the celebs. Somebody will know what I'm talking about. Yes, I, that's on the wall at the Fringe Nexus Cafe. That famous painting you're talking about. That was part oh, of what? This is, this is the stick man version. That's fancy. There we go. I'll, I'll it's put weird, your... the mimetic penetration of that painting, huh? Yeah, well, because it's all cafes. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. It's like the tree of life of cafes. To be the dude who painted it. That's pretty sweet. I'm pretty sure he was a drunk. Well, we all have our issues. Speaking of which, I'm going to go feed my addiction. So this is like technically an intermission in the recording unless you want to talk your process while you do it well well i can i can i'm not going to stop drawing so it's right. up to you <laughs> i can zoom in actually in the recording oh okay well i'm trying to draw a materializing tree somehow so uh, i will make you all big and fancy in the recording for a while i'm gone and i will be back that's pretty good i think As it were, ladies and gentlemen, drawing is a much healthier addiction to have. So, but I was out there thinking, and um, you're one of the few people that, like most people are happy landing somewhere. Vanderclay server, like um, Verveke's or, you know, out in the real world once they're more sorted, perhaps, who knows? I haven't ventured there myself. But you travel between these communities more than most. Um, it's people like you I hope to give a home to, not a home, but like a stop to in your travels with this Fringe Nexus Cafe thing. Um, I think one of the better parts is that Merck has made it a, uh, a sort of, like the sanctuary environment has been facilitated by yeah like his lack of dissidence as you put it right kind of i um i don't know what would happen well but it's not it's not a, it's not like it's a completeness of all available people out there on the fringe to have more of the portal people I, I don't think they would tolerate it though. There, there's a there's a wonderful filtering mechanism when it comes to Merck, and so people not interested in what someone who could be classified as mad has to say are just not there. So that's very functional. Well, I think a lot of intellectuals are are coming at it with a masculine energy, if you'll permit it. And so they they want to see a fight. Yeah. They want to see Sam Harris versus Jordan Peterson, not yeah. Sam Harris and Jordan Peterson having coffee. Um, and that's the environment we're trying to foster. Like, for me, I'm, I have a very Deadwood approach to the situation as far as what to do as this channel. Because, like, I'm coming in, filling in Ryan's shoes best I can. And what he had was like an ability to pull in network or not network experts or like people from the field trying to understand mental disorders and such. And so like my ability to do that is entirely based on networking through the channel 
as the channel. And so to create a space where they can come, like, there's a level of technical expertise to hosting these discussions on a YouTube channel that the experts that we want on to have on the channel shouldn't have because they're so busy being experts in what they're being experts in. Like, yeah. Vander, like Verveki's got people for sure. Um, but there's others that don't. And yeah. so I want to be, a, if we make a place where those people can bring the people they want to talk to and be the facilitators of the tech side of that conversation and the host. And I think we could be of service in a good way that way, especially with oh, the yeah. environment of like, I don't know that I thought that circling that Merck and Greg and Guy did was great. Oh, no, it definitely was. Um, I think when it comes to the academic realm, they're unusually open to and I think it has to, it pertains to their field because it it can be viewed as like research. It doesn't it's not going to hurt their clout. And I think there's going to be some of the academic people that would view it as a impingement on their clout. So I don't know if that, I don't know right. how much that will affect. I mean, maybe it won't. Maybe the days of, of clout are coming to an end and that's the apocalypse. And now this is the new thing. So that could be good. I don't know. Well, it's like, I watch, I watch a lot of Rebecca. I have this kind of a, uh... I'm not sure what it is, but I watch a lot. And um, he went off like a Saturday or so back about how, like, if you have, if you don't have enough discipline, I can't even hear you. Um, and that was an example of what you're, to me, of what you were saying of like, there's this, there's this some like, I can't see Weinstein. There's a level of low that I operate at that Weinstein like, can't sink to, um, despite how how fruitful the conversation might be, and I think that's yeah. But well, and part of that is on us too, though, because if we were bigger players, then and like if we really become something with this, then we should be in that realm, and maybe that's on us to figure out how to become that. Well. That's 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 why I have the Deadwood approach. And um, for those of you unfamiliar, it was a series on HBO based off the I guess the guy wrote based off of the newspapers from the time. But the the gist of the story was a a sheriff and a Jew come into this town called Deadwood, where a guy already had a saloon and was running things. And they set up a hardware store and then a bank. And the bank's a little bit far, but. We need, like, now that the fourth estate is crumbling, um, we need people skilled enough to transmit information. And so, like, learning how to stream and how, what programs to use for the clips and everything you and I are learning. If, yeah. like, in the Discord, we make it as a place for learning those skills and those tools. It's like, well, that's like selling putting up freeware, I think, is good. See, I've been thinking about, um, the internet sort of like anywhere where you can put up content for free is like free real estate. And so it's like a new frontier. And then if you're going into a new frontier at some point, it makes sense to circle the wagons, even if said frontier is digital. And that's why I've been reaching out to different YouTubers and just making different connections. And maybe at some level I have like a, subconscious need to team build because I was a team lead, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Something like that. I think you are stepping into leadership the way people of your age and my age should have a long time ago. Yeah. In, in the only, yeah. in the only avenue accessible to you in our current society. We got well, it. and I, I did not properly embrace it when it was available to me. And so, yeah, that's, that might be it. So I think for me, it's important that we establish a placeness and, um, I 
I think that, that that'll tie everybody who comes through together in the minds of like everybody it touches so that when they look back there's the placeness to tie it to I don't know it, it means something to me that I can't really articulate but I think it's mm -hmm. important um, we're making these we have these little pocket dimensions like we go into it we sit in front of a screen and then go into a trance and go into these pseudo imaginary digital hybrid spaces and they're like to me they're little pocket dimensions there's a spell in D and D called rope trick where like you and your party can climb up the rope into this little bubble that exists in some other plane and then pull the rope in and get away from wherever you're at for a while and um so to me, like that's kind of what we do when we plop, plop in front of our cells, the wall, the the glowing wall of our cell. Um, yeah, yeah, and and that's part of like I have this idea about doing virtual studio, because there should be a way to integrate the virtual space and the physical space in a way that doesn't have to detract. I mean, I had this idea, one of my buddies has attempted to open bars a number of times, and it was part of the idea that the bar could stream a portion of the bar all the time. So if you were away, you could look in at a portion and maybe play the music live streaming and have a connection with a real place. But then also it was still a real place. Like it was a right. real place that existed. It wasn't looking in at a fantasy place. And like that would make the internet more real and make the reality part of the online game at the same time. I, and I, I think that's something that has to sort of happen is like when people show their bookcase, when people show their home, when people show their projects, heck, when Mercury opens up to the Black Knight of Canada he brings more than himself to the table of whatever the cafe is. Like the, uh, the dust on your shoes brings the place with you. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been like, I've been aware, but trying to not do it in a cheesy way about what I put on camera. Mm-hmm. Um, so like if I have an option, which sometimes I don't, but if I have an option, I've been using the same two cups <laughs> to have consistency. Um, and there's nothing super special about them. It's just, I have a very odd menagerie of cups and it would be detracting to keep using different ones because people find it comforting. Like anything that you can keep the same, people find comforting that's why i've been super annoyed with my room being tore up because it was supposed to stay the same it was supposed to just be blue walls but anyway oh well whatever can't right, control well, everything but then at the same time it's like i don't always change my shirt <laughs> i don't always clean up everything like i don't want to remove too much of reality but it's hard to decide um what should be curated and it's very much like curating for an art show because you want to curate, but then maybe you should also show your notebook. It's um, like in super fantasy successful land, like we do something right and the algorithm loves us, feeds us all sorts of, we're, we're so advertiser friendly that we have, we come into the YouTube money. Well, if we keep operating on the philosophical level instead of the political level, we have that potential. Like in that scenario, I travel from town to town throughout rural, rural America, uh, setting up studios so that like, um, yes. all the local, yes, I learned how to play boots. guitar people yes. can swing by and have like, did we discuss this or have I discussed this with someone else separately? I'm fairly sure it's swirling in the ether, like a hot ball of. Yeah, because I have seriously, I've discussed this with Matt Alliston, 
I've discussed this with a couple other YouTube esque people. I've definitely discussed it with my army buddy that lives down here in Florida with me. Um, like the idea that there should be a place that it's like like a gym membership, but for podcasters, uh, it, it has to happen. It's wanted. See, the, the angle you might not have considered yet that I have is that radio stations are a big part of what holds rural communities together, or they were before cars hooked you to the internet version. And, uh, oh, they, buy the old radio stations and just redo them? No, I think we need to, to work with the people in those towns. And that yeah. run those radio no. stations, but free the radio stations from Clearwater. Okay, and the so I've, dri I've driven them. from Florida to the Dakotas a couple of times. I've driven from D.C. to Colorado. I've driven these ways. There are old abandoned radio stations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there, there's places where we can move in fresh, but I'm saying where they exist, there's got to be good people in those towns that can serve. Uh, I yes, think the media everywhere. corruption, you'll find it on every level, but maybe it won't matter. No, I'm maybe saying we, we can, can find good right people to run it. the stuff, not necessarily the people that have it now aren't terrible. <laughs> yeah. But where we can, well, no, I think we can work with people. It, it might not matter too. if uh, if you can operate at the right layer. If you continue the, the friendship conversation level, which is, it's like, it's almost hard to see that it's there, but it should be there. For me, it's it should be there. like the goal, the operating level I like to try and get to is to where my eight-year-old playful, playful self can contribute in the conversation. Don't panic. It's like the, the innocence and good at that age, like the purity of that level of conversation. It's just, it's like the sweet spot as far as I can get to, but I'm not like skilled or disciplined enough to do the D logos. So that's as close as I can get. Yeah. I just have like other obligations that I have to figure out how to keep them at the right priority level and then how to complete my potential with doing this. Hey, there we go. Do the magic of OBS. I don't know what anybody else uses. I think uh, Vanderclay's people are using something else. But Yeah, I've been trying to get OBS to work. I don't find OBS to be smooth. I, I don't know how, how I managed it without two screens anymore. Uh, yeah, I miss operating on many screens, but that was like my old jobs. So I haven't had many screens since I've been at home. I I've never a, had it for video editing. I got a laptop with HDMI out, and so I plugged the HDMI into the nearby television. <laughs> Seems valid. That's the, I, I don't know. The big fancy desktops are still beyond my... They're like, I uh, used to build I, computers, and now I can't. I, I used to work what. at one with, like, four monitors standard. Well... This is coming off more than I hoped it was. I was hoping I could erase through it, but I just need to do it again because I should have faded it before I drew it. So that's fine. You don't have any lice, by the way. What? I said you don't have any lice. It's a camera oh. angle consideration. Okay. Um, it's 42, well, so I'm gonna stop this recording. Okay. And well, like I'm going to keep working gonna on this. Do you want to trash that on record, or are you starting over on that paper? Oh, I'm just going to erase where things were. Okay. And then put in the light spots that way, instead of trying to draw in around them, because it just wasn't working well. Can you? Are you going to keep working on this tonight, or are you going to get to a spot where you can stop? Because I'm still recording at the moment. You know can I mean? you? Is it going to be a problem to keep recording? Or do you want to just quit talking? No, I'm out. I'm. I think I'm. Oh, okay. 
I'm gonna call it mm. for tonight. So, but like you were you were free to like back up and like I didn't know when you were going to do that. You were free to back up and uh, put it on somewhere where I had an image instead of the horrible charcoal. I just well, wanted I just, to do like some... I didn't know the process you were doing right now. If you were like getting to a point where it was a good spot to stop recording, so I wanted. Um, but like you just switched what you were doing, so that's. Yeah, I'll, I'll, sorry. I can stop at the I, switch. This is part of the whole not being used to drawing on camera and being more used to just doing what I want. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's Vivek keeps saying it's not. It's the uh, continuity of practice more than anything else so yeah i really